I know claiming Bob Marley as Irish might be a little difficult here tonight, but uh, bear with me. <clears throat> Jamaica and Ireland have a lot in common. Naomi Campbell, Chris Blackwell, Guinness, a fondness for little green leaves, the weed, religion, the philosophy of procrastination. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can put off till the day after. Unless, of course, it's freedom. Uh, we were both islands. We are both islands. We were both colonies. We share a common yoke, the struggle for identity, the struggle for independence, the vulnerable and uncertain future that's left behind when the jackboot of empire has finally retreated. Ooh. Roots, the getting up, the standing up, and the hard bit, the staying up. <clears throat> In such a struggle, an often violent struggle, the voice of Bob Marley was a voice of reason. So when I heard Bob Marley first, I not only felt it, I felt I understood it. It was 76 in Dublin, and we were listening to punk rock. It was The Clash who brought him home to us, and uh, that EC cover version that I shot the sheriff. That man. <clears throat> yeah. These were love songs you could admit listening to, songs of hurt, hard but healing, tough gone, politics without rhetoric, songs of freedom where that word meant something again, new hymns to a dancing God, redemption songs, a sexy revolution where Jah is Jehovah on street level, not over his people, but with his people, not just styling, jamming. <laughs> The Lion of Judah, down the line of Judah, from Ethiopia, where it all began for the Rasta men, where everything began. Well, maybe. I spent some time in Ethiopia with, uh, with my wife, Ali, and everywhere we went, we saw Bob Marley's face. Royal wise, Solomon and the Queen of Sheba on every street corner. There he was, dressed to hustle God. Let my people go. An ancient plea. Prayers catching fire in Mozambique, Nigeria, the Lebanon, Alabama, Detroit, New York City, Notting Hill, Belfast, Dr. King in dreads, a third and a first world superstar. <clears throat> Mental slavery ends where imagination begins. Here was this new music, rocking out of the shanty towns, born from Calypso and raised on the chilled out R&B, beamed in from New Orleans, lolling, loping rhythms, telling it like it was, like it is, like it ever shall be, skanking, ska, blue beat, rock steady, reggae, dub, and now raga. And all of this from a man who drove three BMWs. <laughs> BMW. Bob Marley and the Whalers. That was his excuse. <laughs> Rock and roll loves its juvenilia, its caricatures, its cartoons. The protest singer, the gospel singer, the pop star, the sex god your more mature messiah types. Um, we love the extremes and we're expected to choose the mud of the blues or the oxygen of gospel, the hellhound on our trail or the band of angels. Well, Bob Marley didn't choose or walk down the middle. He raised to the edges, embracing all extremes, creating a oneness, his oneness, one love. He wanted everything at the same time and was everything at the same time. Prophet, soul rebel, Rasta man, herbs man, wild man, a natural mystic man, ladies man, island man, family man, Rita's man, 
Soccer man, showman, shaman, human, Jamaican. Yeah.